Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining me on this episode of my gameplay ability system tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to talk about gameplay effects a little bit more and tackle gameplay cues. As you see here, my character is on fire currently, and that's a mix of this ablaze gameplay effect that we're going to make and this, where is it? Uh, a blaze uh, gameplay cue. So yeah, if this looks interesting to you, stick around. Okay, first off, let's go into our demo folder, create a new one for our effects, create a new blueprint class. It'll be subclass of gameplay effect. Let's call this GE ablaze. Open this up. We're gonna want to set its duration to 10 seconds. It's going to reduce our health by maybe two, 2.5. That way at the end of this, it will have done a total of 50 damage, I think. Uh, because if we're applying this every half a second, so we're basically uh, taking 2.5 damage every half a second, which basically translates to five damage every one second. Multiply that, multiply, uh, multiply that times 10 seconds, you get 50. Um, basic math. <laughs> I don't know why I just explained that. Sorry. Um, but anyway, let's keep going down. And here's where we're going to add our like a blaze effect soon. Um, but for now, let's just skip over that and go to our removal tag requirements. If you hover over it, you'll see that the description is tag requirements that if met will remove this effect. This is what we want uh, because say our character becomes wet, uh, they walk into a puddle or like, I don't know, it rains on them or something. I think it makes sense for their fire to be extinguished, right? So basically, yeah, if, if this tag, this state is applied to our character, this effect will get removed, which is exactly what we want. All right, um, so that's pretty much it for our ablaze effect. So now if we go into our player character, um, class defaults, let's add the blaze effect to our startup effects just to make sure that it works. So let's hit play and you'll see that I'm taking damage every half a second, which is exactly what we want. All right, I'm just gonna undo that. Actually, no, let's keep it. Um, we'll need that later. But now, um, what you guys came here for, we are going to create a new uh, blueprint, and it's going to extend the gameplay queue notify actor class, and this will have a prefix of GC for gameplay queue, and let's just call this a blaze. All right. Now, basically, what a gameplay queue is, it's either like a particle system or a sound that you can uh, apply or like display or trigger whatever when you apply an effect. So for example, if you get this a blaze effect, you're gonna start displaying like a fire particle system on our character, right? That just kind of makes sense. So that is where we create uh, this, our gameplay queue for the fire. All right, so let's just go ahead and add some visual effects. Oh, looks like I didn't add it to this project. So let's just go to our library and I'm going to import this, uh, this visual effects uh, pack. Okay. Okay, if we go back to the editor, we'll see that the visual effects pack is there. And let's just go into this folder and pick out this fire particle system. So here we go. We have our little fire. All right, great. So if we go to our class defaults, we're going to want to toggle this because if we are no longer a blaze, we should delete the uh, this, this queue or this particle system in this case. Okay. Um, now here is where we set the uh, our, our Q tag. So let's just call it gameplay Q dot debuff dot 
blaze, not deep bug, deep bug. Um, or we can call it the, maybe it's a state debuff. I don't know. I'm still trying to learn, you know, nomenclature, but let's just go for that, uh, with that for now. Okay. Let's keep scrolling down here. Let's see if there is anything else we need. Okay. That's good enough for now. So let's just save that, hit compile, go back to our gameplay effect, gameplay effect blaze. And now if we add, where is it? Our gameplay queue that we just made. See here, we look for our gameplay queue.debuff.ablaze. Let's hit uh, and toggle that, compile. And if I hit run, you'll see my guys on fire. Now, you'll notice it is not following our character. So let's go ahead and fix that. Open up the, the gameplay queue. Look for auto attach to owner and talk about the true. Let's compile, hit run, and now it should follow us. There we go. Um, so you would have to tweak the particle system, obviously, so that it works better. Right now, the emission rate is pretty low, which is why that's happening. But notice it, the particle system went away uh, once the effect is gone. See how we're no longer taking damage? So it looks like that work. that's working as well. But now, say you want like a another little particle animation or something once the effect has completed, or say f say for example you have a an effect that like puts a bomb on you, and after ten seconds the bomb detonates, something like that. Uh, we can implement this in our event graph here. We have to override the oops. We have to override the on remove function okay first we're gonna want to cast to demo character base okay then we're gonna want to get actor location from there we'll want to spawn what is it called oh i almost forgot sorry we need to create a new variable let's call this i don't know like explosion and this is going to be of type um, Niagara system, I believe. And you have to actually change this to be um, an object instead of like the class. So you have to hit object reference. All right, let's just drag this, oops, drag this in here. Spawn system, oops, spawn system, at location. I messed that up. You have to line, attach this to the system template instead of the world context there. Let's link this up. Okay, and this will of course be the location where we're spawning our um, special effect okay and now if we go to our class defaults let's just select the explosion or i'll do this meteor because it looks kind of cool let's compile that and so we don't have to wait that long i'm going to set the duration of the blaze to maybe two seconds just for the sake of time all right let's hit play so after two seconds See, it spawned in the meteor. So that's how you would add like a secondary um, cue or action or whatever once the effect has been removed. You would simply override the on remove function like that, and you can just kind of do whatever you want. Now, another thing you could do is maybe if you've extinguished the flame with a special, for example, with water, right? Because we said that's an option. Uh, maybe you would do a check here to ensure that that state it doesn't exist on the character, and if it does exist, then we won't spawn this meteor or something like that. So there's a lot you could do here. All right, but for now I want to show you how you would create another effect to interact with an existing effect. So in this case, we're gonna want <laughs> in this case we're gonna want to create the gameplay effect wet. 
that's going to actually remove this ablaze debuff. Okay, so let's open that up. It's going to have a duration of maybe two seconds, nah, five seconds. Doesn't really matter. It's not going to do anything. But if you hover over over this, granted tags. It says these tags are applied to the actor I'm applied to, which is exactly what we want because when we apply this effect, we want to apply the wet tag, right? Because if we go back to our ablaze gameplay effect, you'll see that the condition is if we have this wet tag, then we'll remove this effect, okay? So finally, let's quickly create our just basic test actor here. We'll call it water box <laughs> okay this could be anything um i guess we can just make it look like this pickup thing we're gonna add a box collider okay um i'm gonna just move that to there scale it up compile let me add it into the game if we hit play you should see it there all right, cool. Nothing happens when we hover over it, of course. And we'll see the, the blaze effect still triggers. So if we go back in here, go into our event graph, and we're going to edit this function to apply our wet effect. Because okay, so first off, let's drag in our box, then get colliding. Get actors, get overlapping, overlapping actors, sorry. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna do a for each. Okay, drag that in there. And then for every actor, we're gonna cast to character base, demo character base, sorry. From there, we'll want to get ability system component ensure that our system component is valid it's branch okay and if it is valid we'll have to first create game effect context from there we're going to make an outgoing spec because remember this a spec is essentially kind of like an instance of uh, the effect. Here we can just set the wet effect. We can, of course, make this a variable or whatever you want to do. Um, so, just to show you, we can call this on pickup effect. Let's make this a game gameplay effect. Where is it? Here, and it's going to be a class reference. And we're going to drag that into there, just like that. Okay, and then the target is going to be our ability system component. Once we have our spec, we're going to want to simply apply the game, gameplay effect spec to self. And of course, you'll want to pass in the ability system component as the target. Connect that. And hit compile. Of course, that did not work. So... Let's go back here, and we're going to want to cast each uh, overlapping actor as our demo character base. I just forgot to link that. We hit compile. Let's hit play. All right, we'll see. We're still on fire, but if I walk over this, we're no longer on fire, but the on end function still gets triggered. You see? Actually... Let's just make sure that it wasn't just the duration. So I'm going to make the duration of our ablaze game effect back to 10. Compile. Let's hit play. And it was a very simple <laughs> mistake. Uh, we forgot to set the actual gameplay effect. Because remember, and here we made this a variable. So we just forgot to set it. <laughs> so let's just enable that. All right, hit compile and let's test it out now. Cool. So it removes the effect, but you'll see that it's still causing the explosion. 
And that's because in this on remove function, uh, it gets called no matter what happens, right? So in here, you could implement some logic to determine whether or not you're, uh, you should explode or you shouldn't. So to do that, you could do something like this. Let's get our ability system component from there. Tags, get gameplay tags, I think it's called. Yeah, get gameplay tag count. And when here, we're gonna look for the wet tag. And if that is greater than or equal to one. So basically, if we are wet, then we should not explode. So that means if false, we'll spawn the system spawn system at location and let's just break that connection doing that sorry for the spaghetti code by the way i'm still kind of new to this um i don't know if that's any better and let's just connect that as well okay let's compile and let's see what happens now see cool so we're no longer blaze and we did not blow up What's also kind of cool about this is if we go back to our player and remove our startup effects, we can actually just change the variable here to actually set us ablaze instead of um, doing what we want. Because right? all we're doing here is checking for overlap, then creating the instance of the effect that we set and applying it to whatever uh, like walked over this. So let's test it out. I started up, I am not on fire. I'm gonna walk over this and now I am. So yeah. Okay, well that concludes this video. I hope you found it useful. I think you should have all the skills you need to start implementing your own gameplay effects because as we saw in this video, you now know how to apply gameplay effects to your player. You know how to remove them with other gameplay effects. You know how to make them interact, how to display like these cool uh, visual effects uh, or cues is the word. Um, and I mean, I'm not gonna do this in this video, but there's also sound. Um, it's kind of similar to how we did the visual effects. It's just another uh, gameplay cue. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe because I'm gonna be making more tutorial videos on the gameplay ability system. I think in the next episode, we're actually going to uh, try implementing an ability or two. So yeah, stick around.